way meeting scheduled for September 23rd, 20, 2021 is now in order. Thank you, James. Good You're evening. Welcome. Good evening, brothers and sisters. And I want to um, welcome you all. Um, hope you all had a wonderful summer. I want to say happy autumn to you. Happy fall. Um, we have a very interesting and um, agenda for today. As you all know, we expect in May or like um, Eric Adams to come speak to, uh, to the membership today, but he's running a little late. So we're going to start the meeting with our attorney, Harry Greenberg. Also present is our um, EEO attorney, Yetta, Yetta Kirkland. And we expect our um, lobbyist, Hank Seinkoff, to join us at some point. But right now, we're going to start with Mr. Greenberg, who's going to talk about the, um, the mandates that's been going on with the city. And he's going to reiterate some issues regarding the um, Medicare Advantage. So Mr. Greenberg. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to begin by talking about the return to work order. Mm -hmm. um, DC 37 has filed an improper practice um, on the, uh, based on the uh, citywide agreement of which you're part of. They, uh, they've done a very effective uh, 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 IP, improper practice. And all we have to do is file an, uh, an, uh, uh, an inter intervener status, but I have to get in each facility what's wrong, what's not being cleaned, what's not being protected, what's not, you know, like the, the plastic, the, the, the meeting with the, uh, the probationers, everything that's wrong with the health and safety. And then I'm going to need people who have found this, I'll prepare affidavits based on the information they give them. I put those together with the intervener papers and we'll be part of that. So, and I need it sooner rather than later. It's very important. So I said that first. So whoever is in charge of each facility, each delegate or, or, or officer, you need to get that done for me. DC 37 visited over 200 sites and they have plenty. I don't want to be left out at the gate. They've already said that we can uh, attach to their uh, action and, and that's exactly what I think we should do. Now, I'm not saying the Department of Probation isn't trying to do things. In fact, they probably are, but they're not getting there. It's not happening. And that's part of the problem. So this, this could help us get there and keep our members health and safety as much as possible. That's the first thing. We all know that we had, a. Uh, uh, now I'm changing the subject. We all know that there was a restraining order against in the Board of Education, uh, mandatory vaccine. They have, if you go into a school, as of m this Monday, you had to be vaccinated. The MLC, you and other unions filed an article 78 with, by order to show cause and is for a restraining order. And on the 14th, a judge signed that. On the 15th, we had an informal conference. And on the 22nd yesterday, we had the, the official hear, hearing on it. Um, we argued a few things in our papers. And the judge indicated he, the reason he gave us the TRO was there was no exemptions for religious or medical reasons. And we also had uh, other exemptions that were not relevant. Um, that's why he gave us the TRO. After that informal conference, the city changed the uh, Department of Health and Mental Hygiene's order to add in. Of course, they're going to comply with the law, which is the medical and religious exemptions. In addition to that, the UFT had an arbitrated issue in a ward that says for in part for religious exemptions, if you're the leader of your religion says if for vaccinations, you're not gonna be getting the exemption. So the Pope has said he's for vaccination. So that's gonna be a problem for Catholic people. I don't know about the other religions. As far as the medical, you're gonna to have to have a medical and the arbitrator now this is just for the people who are mandated for vaccine, not tested. They have to be by Monday vaccinated, okay? And the reason you and others 
because you're not in the Board of Ed, what part of it is. The mayor has said this was the beginning and he's going to move it on to everybody else, right? So, so that's why you joined in. Um, so yes, last night about five o'clock, the judge came down and vacated the order because the city complied with the two things he was concerned with, the uh, religious and, and, and medical exemptions. In Marty Scheinman, the arbitrator's award for the teachers, he has a mechanism in place to appeal so you can get medical uh, and, and religious e exemptions. Every union has the right to bargain in the city, they will bargain. Now you don't have mandated vaccinations. You have mandated, and if you're not, uh, you had vaccination, but if you don't want to vaccinate, you can be tested once a week. Every agency is doing different things. In the police department, starting Monday, you go, and the fire department is the same. Starting Monday, you have to be vaccinated. And if you're not vaccinated, you have to take a, uh, uh, you have to be, get the test. And it could be the regular test, or they're going to be giving out kits to do it yourself. It'll be collected and that'll be satisfactory. And you do it on their time on, in their facility. Probation said they're going to give you an hour to do that test if you don't want to be vaccinated. And uh, if you need more time, depending on the circumstances, you can get more time. And that that's where things are at. The city has said already they're willing to bargain over these procedures, which we're going to do. This is going to be very fluid because tomorrow we're going to be submitting more to the judge on the mandating of the vaccine for the Board of Ed. And by noon, by one o'clock, the city has to respond. And then the judge by Monday or Tuesday will come down with his order on the temporary restraining order. Whatever that is, we're going forward with a preliminary injunction demand. So, so that's where those things are at. So here's the deal. If you're going to be vaccinated, you tell the department, I'm vaccinated. They'll, they may ask you for proof, but that hasn't come up yet. If you're not and you don't want to be vaccinated, you'll take the test. And, and that's it. If you don't do either, I don't know about probation, but the police department is going to send you home and not pay you. Now, I will tell you that in some places, there are 82% compliance with vaccinations. And in other places, it's down to 42. I don't know what it is in probation, but you don't want to get caught up in the middle of this fight that we're going to have and not be not get paid. Plain and simple. And you can't take time off, right? Except in, in the Board of Education, you could take a year's leave without pay. But there's a problem there, although they said they're going to keep you on health insurance. Now, if it comes to a point where you refuse to do either, and, and it's not going to be right away, they can separate you and, and terminate you. That's going to be another fight, but we're not there yet. Okay. So while I say this is fluid, I don't have all the answers because we're going to have to sit down with them and work out the procedure, which we're going to do as fast as possible because everybody's at issue there. So that's with the vaccination. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you is um, the, uh, on the uh, Medicare Advantage, Aetna sued the city and of the Alliance saying that the bid process was an error. And uh, we're working with the city didn't answer that, but everything is going forward as if there's if there's no restraint by a court or anything. That's the report I have, and uh, if you, okay. I, I won't take questions now. If you could send the questions to the UPOA, we'll get them answered. Okay. I, I don't want to uh, uh, 
get bogged down before Eric Adams starts to speak. And Thank I want to leave time for Yetta to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. So I think, is he in yet? D'Angelo and Charlene? It's connecting to audio. Yes. He's in. He's in? Thank you, Harry. Any, anybody has any questions pertaining to what Harry just spoke about, um, I suggest that you go to unitedprobation at gmail.com and post your questions, and then we'll get back to you because I'm always make sure that we respond to you. If I don't have the answers, I'll refer it to Harry and I'll get it, answers back to you at a later date within the end of this, by the top of next week. So is Mr. Adams in? Yes, I am. How are you doing? I'm fine, sir, and yourself? Good, good. Good to see all of you. Good. Yeah, I want to I wanna, um, thank you for coming back around again. Um, this is your second bout with us. But this is before when you met us, was using the contemplation stage. And now you're at the point where you're, our, our mayor elect, and I want to say thank you for once again for joining us. So we have on with us now is our mayor elect Eric Adams, who's going to speak to the members about some of the issues that we have. So without further ado, I know you you have a schedule. Um, you want to get started? Is it okay? Hello? He's muted. Tanja, unmute him, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so what can I, I'm gonna start with the question, first question. Um, criminal justice reform. Since we are the alternative to incarceration, agents of change and community supervision, how can the members of the United Probation Officers Association help you? We know that we know true criminal justice reform is one of your top priorities, and we want to help you be successful in that regard while saving the city, while saving the city money. As you, as we believe we are the part of the solution. How do you plan to incorporate probation officers in your plan? Will we be invited to sit? Or will we be invited to sit at the table to be a part of the, these discussions? Well, uh, you know, you know, we hear the saying all the time: people closer to the problem, they are closest to the solution. And what I have done with all of my professional agencies, both uh, outside of law enforcement in general, but specifically law enforcement is to uh, not treat you in an insulting way by coming to you and dictating to you what you're going to do. I, I want just the opposite. We're at the transition stage. We're putting together, together our transition team. And I want members from your union and from your organization uh, to be uh, on that transition team. Uh, He's muted. Tianja. Eric, you're muted. Yeah, it keeps going on and off, on and off. I'm on the highway, so if I lose you, I'll just wait until we clear up. Okay. Uh, but I, I would love uh, for you uh, to come forward uh, with your what your observations have been. What do you believe uh, we should be doing uh, in the next few years? And how do we turn around uh, our... Uh, uh, city and law enforcement, what we do in probation, et cetera. So the answers uh, are important. I think they must come from you to be fed into my overall uh, plan. And that's across the board. On all of my uh, agencies, this is my ask of you. Uh, how do we get this right? Okay, thank you. Before I go to the next question, I just want to let the members know, I had opened up, um, I asked all of them to send us questions to ask you before we even came to you with the questions. And I just want to let everybody know on this Zoom that the questions I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm presenting to Mr. Adams are the most asked questions. Some of the questions were not related to this conversation that we're having now. Some of those questions were redirected to other resource, other avenues. And some of them, if, if some of them just didn't fit in with this conversation. So I'm gonna go into the next one. All right, salaries pinch and pension reform. We require college education. We are predominantly women of color, yet our salaries are not in parity with other law enforcement officers. We can serve as many as 40 years plus in years in our careers, yet we never reach our top salaries. We have, been pen we have a pending EEO case in hopes to resolve this matter. For, us, for a small agency, we have a high turnaround. Our turnaround is very high. What is your plan to resolve this issue? Before you answer the um, question, Mr. Adams, I want you to also know that our EEO attorney, Gitsa Kirkland, is also present 
at this um, on the Zoom. Good to see you, Eric. Good to see you. <laughs> do, do you want me to speak on that or? No, I was asking him to, if you want to speak on it, if you want to have a dialogue, if you want him to answer it. Yeah, I would, I would love to hear uh, your thoughts because, uh, you know, when, we, when it comes down to salaries, when it comes down to a uh, change in benefits, uh, all of those things are open to uh, union contractual negotiations. But my goal, when I look at these agencies, not only yours, but also uh, other agencies of where you see predominantly women and women of color, uh, there seem to be pay inequities. And we want to zero in on that. How do we start moving us in a place where all of our uh, city workers are paid in an equitable fashion? And you are law enforcement. You know, you should be treated as such. Uh, everything from being able to process arrests and so many different areas. So I really want to hear from you. And that's going to be part of of, to be part of the whole process and conversation. Okay. Also on the, on the Zoom, Mr. Adams is our um, labor lawyer, Harry Greenberg, who negotiates our contract as well. Thank you for that. Gideon, you wanna chime in on the EO? I mean, I, I just, um, I think that Eric Adams has a long history of being on the right side of these issues. I think we can speak in general terms right now, um, specific to your specific claims. That's for another time and place. I think what he is saying, and I certainly won't speak for him, but he can chime in on this. There was a, there was a recent report done by city council. This has been an endemic problem when we talk about segregated workforces within the city of New York. And the city of New York is an employer of I think it's th over 300,000 employees. And so this has been a long-standing problem with ensuring that there isn't pay disparity within those uh, positions and titles and agencies. I have no doubt, I've already heard from the Adams administration that that is a central focus for them. And I'm sure that they'll be focused on that. Um, it's just a concern uh, when we look at the way payment happens and it, I think it takes the intentionality that hopefully the, this administration will have. So I think there's a time and place to talk about the details of it, but I think what he's all, I'm also hearing from Eric is that he wants to hear from you and from your members and your leadership on how to kind of figure that out and, and go through that process and do it better uh, with, with kind of a new administration. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. So now we asked you what you needed from us and naturally we got to always excuse. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, and now the next question is, we have a list of things that we need. Um, if you don't mind, I'll just present them to you. If um, you can't address them now, we understand that. It can be talked about at a later date, but I just want to give you the most common needs that my members have presented to me and from my observation and from my experience as a probation officer and supervisor. Um, what we need in order for you to be successful, we will need more probation officers. We need better, safer working conditions and locations. We need safer and better cars. Our cars, we have like Prius and I don't know what the other cars are, but we need like SUVs to carry the, um, the people that we have in custody, in our care, in custody from one place to another. Um, we need continued training and we need tax IDs to process arrest. For some reason, we don't have tax IDs and when my members make arrests, they're not getting the credit for it, and I don't understand why, so we've been working on that. And we need a commissioner and administration that, who is willing to work with us and give us the respect that we deserve. Um, it's concerning because the disrespect and the disregard we have experienced these past years makes us wonder if we had not been predominantly women and people of color, would we have been treated differently? So those are our, our concerns and our needs that we wanted to present to you. And that's so important. And we want to make sure that you have the equipment to do your job. And that is the goal that we're going to push to make sure you have the proper equipment. You can't have dilapidated equipment and you can't have an unsafe environment. And we're going to focus on that. Okay, thank you. I, um, and I wanted to, so I, if, I think that concludes our questions, but I just want you to know that um, we have been with you from the beginning. Like I said, before you even made your announcement that you were running for mayor, and we're gonna be with you to the, get you across the border to the other side of the water, as Ms. Ingrid has said to me one day. And um, we're looking forward to working with you. We've been Team Eric from the beginning and we're gonna be Team Eric to the end. And we wanna thank you. <laughs>
no, all the way. You see my sign back there, right? So um, we're going to be with you all the way through. And I do, and my team looks forward to speaking to you at a later date and to expand on some of these issues And once, once all this is said and done. Thank you very much. And I thank you for seeing us and hearing us. Okay, take care. Take care and be safe. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was good. I think that was good that he came back for the second time. He met with the executive board one time before that. Um, Mr. Greenbrook has made his presentation. Yeda has, Yeda, anything going on with the EO case right now? It's pending in federal court. Um, the district judge is um, considering a motion for dismissal that the city brought, an, a, a, a summary judgment motion for dismissal. Um, it's been fully submitted for several months. Um, we'll see what happens with that. Um, once we get that decision, then there'll be a case management plan that's set so that we have a scheduled time for when discovery happens. Um, and because it is a employment matter, um, part of the Southern District's protocols is that it's set down for mandatory mediation. And so we'll have a chance to sit down to try to see if we can settle the matter. Uh, if we can't, we'll move forward with discovery and proceed with the litigation. Okay. Um, I just want everybody to know too that yesterday we had, um, we was also on it to go, um, Senator Bernardis from District 22 in Brooklyn. He chairs the Civil Service um, Committee, right? What is it? He's, he, chairs the, he chairs the pension for civil service workers. And he joined us yesterday in Brooklyn and he did a, a walkthrough with us from family court to adult court. And I'm um, adult court to family. He hung out with us for about three hours. And he, he did that because when we met with him a couple of weeks ago and, and a couple of us went to meet with him, he was astounded to hear the stories about probation. And sad to say, he too did not know what we did. So for him to get a better idea of who we are and what we do and to support our pension, because my, my intention is to, to um, reintroduce the bill or have him prepare another bill for us. But he felt that in order for him to fully get a grasp of who we was, he had to come and meet us and see us. So what we did was we took him over to Brooklyn, which is the borough that he covers, and he met with um, Paulie, Paul Leon and, and a couple of the other um, 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 probation officers, supervisors, union reps, um, even some of the managers. And he sat down and he talked to us and he gave us his time and he told everybody. And what I liked at the conclusion of his tour, he said to us while we was in family court that he's gonna make a commitment to help us get our pension reform and try to get us the pension that we deserve. And, um, and everyone feels that we're long overdue. Promises are we making? No, but I really feel that I feel good. I feel good about what's going on for us as far as our salaries. I feel good about the pension. That might take a little bit longer of a haul to get done, but I feel like this is our time and um, I will continue to advocate and educate because I have to do both at the same time because that's still an issue for us to under, for people to understand who we are. I feel that we are the healing. We, we are where the healing begins when it comes to this whole criminal justice and we are the solution. And that's gonna be my platform for getting us to where we need to be. Um, this wasn't gonna be a um, long meeting. It's just more it, it informative meeting. I wanna congratulate the um, probation officer trainees who have now become permanent. So I wanna say, Kudos to you all. Um, good things is happening for this union. We just got to stay focused and we just got to be patient. Like I said, some of the questions presented to us on the United Probation at Gmail was not for this platform. It was they were redirected to other um, to the appropriate um, to the appropriate people, persons who can deal with those questions. Okay. So without further ado, if there's any questions or concerns that from what you heard tonight, I hope that. It was to see your status, you know, if you was, um, I hope that it was, you know, you guys are happy with the answer that you heard. We can't expect any true commitments because we're not there yet, but at least it was touched upon. I think that's safe. What do you think, Harry? And yet, I think it was, I think it was sufficient. So with that said, I'm going to tell everybody to have a good evening and you can always go to unitedprobation at gmail.com. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Good night. Good night.